Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the SIP wrap for the day of uh, 30th of September for the day of 2019. Uh, so SIP wrap is situation report in case you do not know. So if not, you will know, the, know it better by the name of summary. First, let's start off with uh, some news from Russia. Um, the Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson uh, leaders, so-called so-called leaders, uh, have signed the agreement you know, in a very grand uh, ceremony in Moscow. And uh, this starts the process of the ascension into the Russian Federation or the self-annexation into Russia. So the this is not the four regions already annexed this they are not annexed yet they only started the process of annexing so they need to go through the first step which is the constitu constitutional court which need to approve and make sure that it does not uh, contradict any russian law and then they will go to the lower house for approval then the upper house and then finally putin have to sign on it then it will become law so uh as of now the four regions are still not part of russia just in case you guys are wondering. So the uh, there's additional information uh, coming out that <clears throat> the 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 parts that is already conquered uh, in Mykolaiv will be part of the Kherson region. So um, yeah, so conquest is real. Uh, so any parts that is, uh, they had, so basically Snihurivka, Blahodatni, this re entire region, which is actually part of Mykolaiv, uh, will be absorbed into the Kherson region. Um, then uh, we have uh, this weird situation. Um, Zelensky doing a video with uh, two aides, uh, the chairman of the Vokhona Rada, which is their parliament, and the prime minister of Ukraine, which I don't even know have this person. So they, three of them, actually signed a uh, application for a accelerated... Um, ascension into NATO. Uh, so they call it a defining step. So basically they sign an application form to request to join NATO immediately, saying that uh, they have proven themselves to be worthy of being part of NATO and uh, they are compatible. Uh, so far the information, uh, the response coming out from uh, NATO is that they say now is not the time. Similarly in USA, they also say now is not the time. So. So I, as I said, uh, this is probably almost a scam. As, so I do not know why Ukraine would think that this will work. So um, and then, but on the good news side, uh, for Ukraine, the the U.S. Congress has passed a law which allocates twelve point four billion dollars in new aids to Ukraine. So there's actually a breakdown, and uh, so four point five billion uh is is to support the work of the Ukrainian government. So basically, probably uh, pay salary, I guess. Three billion for military support, including military training, arms and equipment supplies and logistics. So, and then, so the Ukrainian government is actually more expensive. And uh, there is 2.8 billion for US military operation in Europe, including mission support, intelligence operation, and military service payment and equipment purchase. So I assume the U.S. military operation is actually to support directly Ukraine. Then technically, this aid, I believe, will, is a kind of loan. Then Ukraine is basically paying for a mercenary service from the U.S. military, if that's the case. I don't think this is free money. So um, $1.5 billion is to re replenish uh, U.S. own military reserve. Uh, because their uh, their their reserve have been reduced due to giving uh, stuff to Ukraine, so how is this a uh, how is this a uh, aid to Ukraine? I have no idea. And uh, zero point five billion for the production of critical weapons to replace those sent to Ukraine. Similarly, this is also for the U.S. military itself. So in fact, you no, know, basically two billion out of this is actually not for Ukraine. And in fact, even this one, I'm not so sure. So anyway, uh, that's that's that. Over down at the Mikolai front, uh, we this or Mikolai front, we have a Sukhoi twenty five shot down over Tanovi Podi. Uh, this is reported by the Russian Military of Defense. Uh, this happened the day before yesterday, uh, on the 29th. and uh, oh, and there's nothing else here over here. 
uh, over at the Davidiv Brit front, the Ukrainians launched an attack on Davidiv Brit. So, uh, according to the pro-Russian source, right, but the Ukrainians uh, launched an attack at Davidiv Brit, fourteen units of armored vehicle, including tanks, and then uh, but the Russians has already seen them coming, so they actually uh managed to destroy a few of these uh tanks and armored vehicles. I'm sorry. Then then the rest of the forces began to redrew. But then it's a trap. As they redrew, they got shelled by uh, Russian artillery. And uh, as such, a tentative as of this information, they have redrew over to Bilohirka and uh, to the river crossing region. Uh, whether they got redrew or not, uh, we are not so sure. And uh, in an, another piece of information, a Sukhoi 24 of the Ukrainian Air Force has been shot down over Kaluha. This, uh, they were shot down by a uh, Russian Air, Air Force. Uh, this one is o this one this information is older, also older so yeah and uh there's nothing happening at the uh, david debris front so that's all from the southern front over at the zaporizhia line uh, nothing happens so uh nothing to say moving on to the donets front so at the donets front uh the offensive uh is not reported or maybe not yet uh, because i uh, I have to leave earlier today. I I'm going for F1 Singapore Grand Prix, so I so I won't be able to wait for that uh, morning report. But as for the night report, they didn't mention attacks, or at least the night report from the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense never reports on night uh, on on attacks in the night. So the <clears throat> there's another MiG-29 shot over Kurakove. Uh, this one is reported by the Russian Ministry of Defense. But I believe typically the fighting should be at Pelivka and uh, maybe no Novo Mahalivka. But this is a uh, the usual place. Uh, there, there is if there isn't any you no know, major breakthrough because if there is any major stuff happening, uh, the pro-Russian source would probably will be on it already. So typical fighting in the region, uh, the Russians, uh, the Russian pro-Russian sources usually don't really talk about it. Pervomaiske is probably also fighting, and uh, New York we shall see. Uh, I will update uh, you guys uh, much later, maybe after, you know, in more than 12 hours time, 13, 14 hours time, we shall see. And um, moving on to the Bakhmut front, uh, there is no significant information. Uh, any information were to come out about fighting uh, in this region will, will be coming out from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, there is no significant breakthrough in the region, so uh, pro-Russian source never talked about it, so unlikely to be anything major. There's a MiG-29 shot down over Klishivka. So this is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry on the 29th of September. For the 29th of September. On, so they reported this yesterday. Of significance at the Bakhmut front is the redeployment of Ukrainian forces from the Soleda region. This is this is Soleda uh, city or town. Uh, they have been redeployed. There's a partial redeployment. Not all of them. Uh, there's a there's a group uh, being uh, transferred quickly to the Liman front because uh, Lim they need to quickly capture Liman and uh, they are they need more reinforcement. Over at the Sivas front, it's also quiet over here. Nothing also happening on the northern side. Similarly, there is re redeployment of the forces from the Sivas front for the Ukrainians over to the Liman front. Uh, so, as such, uh, the Ukrainians now we are at the Liman front. The Ukrainians have sent a reinforcement from Sivas and Soleda region to reinforce their forces and uh, to put up to keep up the pressure on the Russians uh, to to you know, capture Liman. But this transfer of reserve also is very uh, concerning because uh, this also proved that uh, the defense might be a bit too strong, and they really want more troops to come in to help out to make sure that they can capture this location. And because there is already another force on the Oscu region, which they could call and come to support, which means that uh, uh, they are running out of reserves in this region that they have to call reserve from the other fronts. Because previously they have reserve at Bohoru Dashne, which they have already caught in. And uh, so uh, we might actually see the, the very last ditch effort from the Ukrainian forces to capture Liman. I, they might not have any more reserve, uh, in at least readily in this region to reinforce anymore. So whatever they have on the ground, uh, is they have on the ground. However, this this what they have on the ground is actually quite a lot. 
uh, the lowest estimate is around 6,000 and the highest estimate is 20,000. There is rumors writing 40,000, but I don't think it's 40,000. That sounds a bit too much. But I believe the number around 20,000 troops uh, is possible. Is possible. Of course, uh, this 20,000 does not include if they have died. Uh, this is basically include everyone uh, that is actually in the operation. And uh, the Russian side, I saw in the comment uh, during the for the live stream from yesterday, from the open mic, uh, the a pro Ukrainian uh, commenter, he said the Russian troops is around 5,000. So if this is 6,000 and Russian is 5,000, I don't think that is likely because the the information coming from the ground is that the Russian forces is severely outnumbered, at least three to one. So 20,000 seems like the right number uh, at the Liban uh, front where the Ukrainians have 20,000 20, against uh, 5,000 Russian troops. I think that's probably correct. So the, <clears throat> the Ukrainians continue to put pressure from uh, fighting from Yampil towards Liman, from Dibrova, and uh, and also from the direction of Drobyshevi and Stavki. The, the Russian lines at Liman is along the border of the city. They are no longer on the outskirts of the city. They are along the border of the city defending the, the city. And then, uh, then came the information that the Ukrainians are crossing the Jerebets River uh, in the north northern region of uh, Terni. And what happened is that while, while they just crossed, Russian reinforcement arrived. So the Russian reinforcement, <coughs> uh, this sorry, this reinforcement is from the day, uh, the day before yes, uh, yesterday, because they wrote the day before. But the Russian reinforcement actually arrived just as uh, the Ukrainian forces crossed the river, and uh, immediately this force that was trying to cross the river got got hit back. So they were knocked out by the approaching units of the Russian armed forces and withdrew to the west bank of Danivka. So so, which also suggests the Nifka was captured. And then later in the day, uh, there is reports of fighting at Terni as well as at Yampolivka. So, uh, these are from pro-Russian sources. Uh, actually, most of the information will be from pro-Russian sources because the Ukrainian uh, sources will always say uh, operational secrecy, so they will not say anything. So, if you want the information, <clears throat> it is from the Russian side. And... Um, which with these fighting reports, so uh, which also suggests below Horivka has been captured. And uh, with this reinforcement, the Russians started a counter offensive. So there is a fighting, you no, know, they call it counter maneuver battles. Uh, not sure the counter means you stop them from maneuver maneuvering or you are actually maneuvering to counter their maneuvering. So, whatever it is, there's a counter offensive uh, at Yampil as well as in the northern part of Liman. So it was a bit. Uh, not so clear about you know the northern part of Liman. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, I think this is this this is the wrong copy. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> North of Liman, that's what they wrote. So they didn't specify where. So what happened was that uh the north of Liman apparently refers partly to Stavki because uh as of uh, 7 p.m. Uh, in Ukraine time, uh, the Ukrainian forces have been uh, driven out of Stavki and the Russian has recaptured Stavki. And uh, the situation now is as such, where the Ukrainian forces, uh, after you know, capture Strebyshevin and uh, Derilov, uh, they actually attack further, they put pressure on all sides and, uh, and the Russians tighten up to the border of the city. And uh, the Ukrainians try to cut off reinforcement from the north, try to encircle and uh, physically fully encircle the region. However, Russian reinforcement come just in time and stop the crossing. Then with the additional troops, the Russian uh, counter-attack counter in the south at Yampil and at, at Stavki at area, recaptured Stavki. And the Ukrainians, uh, though, based on the developments, they have continued to call reinforcement over that Sivas and Solida region. So yeah, this is the quick version of this uh, but by the time you read this part you probably understand what i already said and over at the oscule front and uh oscule front the only information uh, we come to have is from the pro-ukrainian source where they looks like uh kuris Livka has been captured but i believe uh Kuri, Kuri Livka is indeed probably be captured uh because uh the photo seems to suggest that the troops are in the town 
So that's all from the Oscar front. And um, so that's all from the summary for the day of 219 for the 30th of September. And uh, I, there won't be any quick updates for the next 12, 13 hours. Uh, so, uh, yeah, because I will be you no know, going to watch room rooms. And I'll see you in the next update.